My name is Jeff McCluskey. I am president of the Mesa County Patriots. Thank you all for coming out. Uh, we're going to start with the Pledge of Allegiance and a prayer. Uh, can you all stand and join me? to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Amen. Dave Cox is going to say a prayer. <laughs> Lord, we come together before you today, your humble servants and your most grateful creation. I pray that you would speak to us this evening, give, give us your guidance, bring to us your the, the faith that we can find a way out of this and, and, and believing in you. In God's name, amen. amen. So uh, I'd like to recognize a few uh, uh, notable people here this evening. Uh, we have Brandon Sigtree, who has been such an activist and, and on the state lands movement. Brandon, stand up and speak. County Commissioner Steve Alcofresca. John Justman. Am I leaving anyone out? Uh, Delta County Commissioner. Delta Doug County Commissioner, Ashley. thank you. What's his name? Doug Ashley. Doug Ashley. Okay, so uh, I want to make a few quick announcements. Um, there's going to be a Freedom Colorado rally this Saturday at Lincoln Park. I believe it's 1 to 4? Yes. 1 to 4. Uh, Ken Ivory, Utah uh, uh, State House Representative Ken Ivory will be speaking at 2. I know David Justice will be speaking at some point, uh, who's a famous activist uh, involved with the state land movement. Uh, I know Kevin McCartney will be speaking. There will be some other speakers. There will be a bake sale. Uh, there will be some music and some other events, so please try to make that at Lincoln Park Saturday from 1 to 4. Um, and what else do I need to say? Otherwise, I guess we'll jump right in and let me introduce Utah State Representative Ken Ivory. Uh, he is at the forefront of the states' <coughs> rights movements. He wrote the law, I believe it was last year, passed through the Utah legislature and signed by the governor where Utah will attempt, I guess I should say attempt, to reclaim 20 million acres rightfully and legally theirs from the federal government next year. And uh, he's an eloquent, powerful speaker on constitutional rights and states' rights movements. And, um, oh, I also want to mention that he has books for sale out front on this little table. Uh, it's from his organization, Where's the Line America, which is kind of a separate organization which talks about uh, how state supremacy uh, overrides federal usurpation, let's say. Uh, and it's an excellent book, and the organization is great. All his presentations are great. Pick one of those up on your way out if you can, $10. There's also some brochures out there. And without further ado. And the American Lands Council president as well. He's the president of the American Lands Council. And let's give him a warm round of applause for you. I know there's going to be a bake sale. I'm glad I came. <laughs> now, what an honor to be here. What, what an honor to be here. If, if, if we're not excited now, there's something wrong. We need to have our pulse checked because this is big as, it, as big as it gets. We've, uh, I, I got involved in, in public service. I've got four children. And, and you look at what's coming. Think, of, think about what's going on right now. We'll, we'll go through some of the slides and things on this, but we have a federal government that's overspending a trillion dollars a year. A trillion dollars a year. Now, as we get into some of these things, and you think in, in our state, your state right here in Colorado, 46.1% of your spending in Colorado is federally sourced. 46%. In Utah, it's 45.3%. It's you know, throughout the states, particularly in the West, it's somewhere between 30 and 50 percent of our state spending comes from a federal government that is admittedly broke. In uh, the, the latest consolidated financial statement, this is the U.S. Government Accountability Office, in, in just January of this year, 
said our, our, our budget path, our trajectory is, is unsustainable. Well, what does that word mean, unsustainable? It means it's going to end. It means it's going to end. Well, what do we do? What do we do? We've got other things that are out there that uh, we'll look at some of these, and you've had them here, the, the fires that are raging through our forest because we have policies that say you can't harvest a tree. When for years we, we, we dealt with our forests and, and rather than have millions of acres be sucked up in thousands of trees per acre, we harvested the trees and the money went to educate children and it was this wonderful symbiotic relationship that you actually used your resource, generated revenue, educated children, and provided a tax base for your economy. And, and, and that's all changing. And yeah, we'll, we'll look at some of this as we go, but I would, I would submit to you that there is a solution, as, as David was talking about and mentioned in his, in his prayer. I would submit to you there is a solution, and there's a solution big enough. These are big, big issues. And what we're taking on is a big, big deal. This isn't for the faint-hearted, it's just not. This is a big deal, but the problems are big. So let's just kind of go into some of this here, and I want to just, just, just look at some of these things. Look at that right there. I mean, doesn't that tell the whole story? You know, it's funny, I had uh, some Boy Scouts come up the last night of our legislative session, and I handed them all these cards. I think I may have enough for everybody. Let me see if I can get those out. Lori, would you pass those out? I think there's enough for everybody. If not, we'll try to get a friend born. We'll get some back out to you. But last night in the legislative session, I have some Boy Scouts coming up, and I, I showed them that map, and I said, you know, the red there, that's the federally controlled lands in the United States. I said, what do you think about that? What do you think their, their, their first comment was? Lopsided. Exactly right. Exactly. And everybody had, there, there's two things that everybody says. When you show them that card and say, what do you think? The first thing is they say, why? And you know what the second one is? Look at Nevada. <laughs> <laughs> right? Right? Nevada's 90% federally controlled. Why? Look at the shape it's in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, 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 and again, resources, they've got resources that are unbelievable. But that question why really, really plagued me. And so uh, see, see if this sounds familiar, okay? See if this sounds familiar. Federal government's not disposing of our land like it promised when we were made a state. We can't pay to educate our children because we don't have the tax base. A good commissioner here was telling me you got... 25% taxable land in your county. If we've got some counties that are less than 10% taxable land. Poor Alaska, I'll show you here in a minute. They've got some counties that have 0.3% taxable land. But so, but so, federal government's not disposing the land like it's prom like a promise. We can't tax the land to adequately fund education. We can't grow our economy and provide good paying jobs for our people. And, and the federal government's hoarding all of these abundant minerals and natural resources. Let me just divert for just a second. I used to work for the mayor of the city of Osaka in Japan. I was in the 